Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Catch and I'm done with the folio. I did a few more things after the last video, but I didn't have to do much to finish it off. It um, went together very, very quickly. So I'm gonna do a quick flip through of that and then we're going to start a um, tag journal using the same kit. But as I promised, I wanted to do a tag journal using this kit. So we're gonna go through this. I've just tied it with some green seam binding. And then um, I added a few little things, like a few decorations like that on there. And and I added a little um, clear sort of button down there. Just It's just glued on. And so those go in there. And then on our photograph of this uh, lady, this is a Tim Holtz, one of his photos. I just added a stamp and a stamp, <laughs> a postage stamp and a silicone stamp. And then one of the Tracy labels um, added coffee dyed paper and stitched around it. And then there's um, the large angel tag there. And in this pocket at the top, we have um, a little tag and then a journaling card with a leprechaun on it and his pot of gold. So those just tucked in there nicely so how are you guys doing i hope you're having a fantastic day we have sunshine which makes me so happy went and got a haircut so life is good right and then when you open this up oh i need to say sorry hugs and blessings to tamara oz jan Third Eye Open 802. Thank you guys so much for your kind comments and watching, commenting, and um, just just being part of my channel. I appreciate you guys very much. You were like my little, my channel family. So thank you. And I want to say a huge super thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Helms. You guys spoil me. You are the sweetest. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, when you open this up, I forgot to show you this, but I mean, you saw it when we originally talked about building this um, journal. And you can see here, there's a tag in there. That's this one up here. So um, it doesn't really seem to get in the way of the journaling card. So I, I went ahead and put it up there. You can, if you make one of these, you can decide whether you want a tag at that very top spot. That's the very, very tip top before these other um, pockets. So I just have that tucked in there. And yeah, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So I guess technically it could fall in deeper, but it's it's pretty snug. I don't think that it's would go anywhere. It's not like super loose. So and then we have our um, leprechaun little tag that we did for the 50 stack challenge. So those won't be um, around at the end of the 50 stack challenge, this one either we're using it now but that's that's the point of the 50 stack challenge is to build up some ephemera and have some items for your journals um i did a little collage there and on this pocket and then over here we have our um, other little tag that we made for the 50 stack challenge and we did this pocket together and up at the top there's a journaling card I didn't stitch around that one. I might still do that. I may just leave it as it is because it's fine like that too. And then um, just a little collage back here. And then I did add some, a few pages. It's just like four pages to write on. And then you can also write back here as well. I mean, this is not clearly a huge writing journal. It's more of an art piece than a uh, like a writing journal. But you could have it for St. Patrick's Day and maybe just put... Um, special family traditions for St. Patrick's Day or something like that. I added a little bold pin with a bow and um, four-leaf clover and there's just a couple little beads on there as well. There's a little collage. Our gentleman here with a collage and then you guys saw this pocket. I, um, I think I did this one without you but I showed it to you already. And there's a little journaling card there. And then we have another little tag, double tag, whatever, that's all stitched around. And then there's this, um, this is, I started to make the tag journal and then I totally spaced it and glued this tag on top without putting another piece of fabric in. So it now is just a little booklet that will go <laughs> with this journal. <laughs> 
so eh, sometimes you know what are you gonna do so there it is and on the back I did add um, a little you know more paper so the whole thing's covered and signed it and then it gets tied with this so yeah just a fun it was just super fun and fast and what a great gift to give someone or you know to have for your St. Patrick's Day memories or whatever because it's not like a huge great big whole journal but with the um, wearing of the green kit you could definitely do a standard size journal as well so Today we're going to use the tags, as I said, to make one of these, something like this. This is the inspiration. This is my gift from Carol Laws. She sent it to me over Christmas and it's an accordion tag journal. So it's basically one long strip of um, tags that she has put together with pieces of fabric. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. I don't know if I'm gonna sew in as many of the little like journaling spots i love them they're fantastic i haven't decided that part yet but i may i don't know so anyway but i want something kind of kind of along those lines i don't know that mine will be as neat and precise as carol's that one is fantastically made so but we're going to attempt it my biggest problem is i tend to not leave enough room between um the fabric bits if you know what I mean like so that it it has some room <laughs> in there so I need to think about that amount of space which is roughly probably 16th of an inch or so I don't know maybe an eighth how's that so I'm gonna kind of put them on here and try my best to leave myself a, a gap that could have a signature but also allows the book to close properly because if you don't leave a big enough gap when you try to fold it up they all start to sort of and I know this because I did it they all go a little wonky so you got to make sure that you leave enough between there because see you can see it here it sort of is coming this way because it's not right so that was my earlier attempt at trying to glue them together again so I had two attempts so if you have a few attempts don't feel bad <laughs> and then you need roughly an inch I mean this is probably a tiny bit less than an inch there's no like you have to have this amount of fabric you just have to have enough so that it spans across the opening obviously and um can be you know hook the pages together is really what it comes down to so that's what you want to make sure. So I need to, am I doing this right? This one's going to go on top. <laughs> Sorry. See, I'm already struggling. Yes, that's right. So that will get put together like that. Eh. This is probably going to be very painful to watch. So feel free to fast forward. And at some point I probably will... Um, turn off the camera and continue on on my own but I want you guys to at least see how I'm doing it and I don't know if Carol did I don't think she did this one on camera but I know she's done lots of um you know like tag journals and things like that and so definitely go check out her channel because she does an excellent job with them so I'm just going to put glue along here because this will get uh what do you call stitched if you choose not to stitch I would use like a Fabri-Tac or something like that okay so definitely definitely think about that oh this one this isn't okay that one is not going on yet <laughs> I'm sorry I almost boogered it up again this is gonna go along here that one is the back of this tag Yeah, I I think I'm making it harder than it has to be. I'm just worrying about it too much. So this tag can get glued on because we don't need to attach another one on this side. So we have that side and now we can put on this one. We have our tab for the next, or yeah, our hinge for the next tag. 
So this one can go on top. And I'm just, like I said, using glue stick because I do plan on stitching around these. Um, I did ink around the outside edges already because it's real hard to, I cut these out with a blade and they still aren't quite the same size. So I'll have to do a little trimming, but, um, what was I saying? My, my talking during this time is probably not going to be very reliable. So <laughs> don't quote me on anything. <laughs> Cause it'll probably be wrong. It's, it's going to be a brain twister for me. This is the first one I've done like this. I've done other like hinge journals and things using fabric, but this, I haven't done one of these accordion style ones before. So bear with me. I apologize. And I'm just going to trim that even. And then, of course, I will probably go around again and add a little ink because you can still see little white spots here and there. Okay, so there's our first quote-unquote page. Now, whichever one I want... So this gentleman, I want him facing this cottage. So I'm just gonna set that there for now. And I'm gonna put this one, which is the back of the, the gentleman here, because that'll be the back of his card. I need to put fabric over here too. <laughs> so I've put my tags. This is the front tag. And this is the tag that's behind it. So I kind of, you know, faced them off that way just to sort of make it hopefully a little bit easier on my me brain trying to be semi-organized. As organized as I get anyways. And I need to remember to leave my a good gap in there. Does that seem... And you could use, you know, some other type of glue to hold these down too. I just like um, glue stick because it really does hold this glue stick, the Scotch Crate holds fabric fine. I mean, I don't think I would use it alone, but I've never had any trouble with anything falling off with this. This is the Scotch Permanent, it's now called. I keep saying Scotch Create because that's the old name for it. But it's now called Scotch Permanent. Okay. So the biggest thing is to leave that gap. And I know that seems like a lot of a gap, but trust me when I say I did it wrong and paid. So, yeah, you just want to make sure you get it good. I'm going to put our glue over here before we glue our top tag on. Oh, that one's shorter. How did I do that? I hope I have enough. And this is just some old cotton fabric that I have. Um, it's off of, um, why are these short? A doily, like a center of the table kind of doily. That's just, I don't know exactly what this fabric is, but some kind of cotton. Just use whatever you have. You could use um, pillowcase or whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then that one's going to go on top of there. So I have a nice gap. So I, if I want to, I can sew in paper or add pockets. That's the other thing. If you want to add pockets to it and all that, you need some room in there. Otherwise, it's just going to be this big... Um, gator mouth thing that you're not going to be able to tie closed or anything so definitely be thinking about that because you don't want I mean this one lays beautifully that Carol made it it opens when it's untied but it will come together so um, just make sure you leave yourself some room if you want to put anything in it 
you just want the tags, then you don't have to stress quite as much about that, that part. These ones came together better. Looks like, anyways, I need a paper towel because I'm all sticky. So look, I'm already winning because I remembered to put a tab over there. <laughs> and that tab does not look straight, but it's okay because it's going to get glued uh, between the other, the other tags. So it won't be the end of the world. Okay. Looks, looks pretty good. I don't see any major hangovers. There's a little bit of, a little tiny here and down at the bottom. I have been so stuck on chicken pot pies lately, you guys. It's <laughs> all I want to make. I, of course, buy pie crust because mine tastes like dirt. But anyhow, that's a whole nother story. I don't bake. But yeah, I don't know why. I get on those kicks where I just want to eat the same thing for a while and then I get out of it. I don't know. But my husband's probably going to be like, we're having another pie thing. <laughs> yes. Because of course it's horrible for you. So why would we not want to do that? Okay, so that goes like that. And then this one is going to be... No, I want this facing this. See, you gotta really, if you if you want it a certain way, if you don't care how it is, then don't worry about it. But if you have a particular layout in mind, really try to think about it while you're putting it together because it, it makes a difference. It does matter. And I'm kind of using my lines to try to sort of get these as straight as I can. Um, You know, however, however you want to do it, you can eyeball it, but sometimes it's good to get a little help from a, a straight edge. Okay, I think that's straight. It's hard to tell because my fabric is crooked. Yes, you're correct about that. I know I'm being super picky, but I want it to lay nice like Carol's does. So I'm being like ultra picky. So I understand if you want to fast forward, fast forward. I totally, I feel your pain. And like I said, I'll probably pause here in a minute and just finish this part up and then come back when it's all done with that. We want it to lay flat. Oh, fabric. Were you yelling at me? I heard you. Thank you. <laughs> Need all the help I can get. <laughs> I heard somebody. Fabric! Yes. I mean, you could make them shorter. You don't have to have them. You need 12 tags if you want it the way this one is. To start with and you don't have to use these tags you can use any tags that you have um you could even use different size tags you'll just have to make your uh, pieces your pieces of fabric different size if you see what i mean Thank you for yelling fabric, y'all. I would have done it again. Oh, 
I think in general, Carol is a much more precise crafter than I am. But her results show that. <laughs> They're very good. It's the, it's the quilter in her, I think, that helps with that. I don't do precise that greatly. That's why um, scrapbooking didn't last as something for me because it felt too, you have to do it this way kind of thing, you know? Okay, that's right. And then this one, and we'll put our the leprechaun there. Okay, so I'm going to keep on going, just putting these together, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back, and I have um, got it all together. I messed up. <laughs> on the very last one, I forgot to add the little tab, fabric tab, so mine has five. So since it has five, I think I probably will add some... Um, you know, journaling spots. I don't know that I'll do every spot, but I am going to add some journaling spots. I wanted to show you guys. My awesome friend Betty Ann gave me these dyed papers. I think this is onion dye, she said, and this is cabbage. So aren't those cool? So it's, it's not these. These are mine, but all these cool dyed pages, and they look really good with this um, kit. So I'm going to use a little bit of that in there. So thank you, Betty Ann. That was super sweet of you to send. So anyhow, I have a few pages together just to give you an idea of, you know, you can use scraps or um, whatever you have in your in your stash because you're just you're just building little signatures just like you would in a full size journal, and you would sew it the same way. So you would. Um, get them all together and I don't have all my stuff but anyways you would stitch those right in there like that I think what we'll do right now though is just put a few pockets because I want to stitch around these so I don't want to sew in my signatures yet anyway even if I did have my stuff because um, then it's just harder to sew obviously because you've got all this extra paper flopping around in there so I think we'll use some of these like journaling cards as pockets. I think they would be good pockets wherever we can. We got one another, one another leprechaun or no? Maybe not that. Um, but you could do belly bands. Uh, you could do all manner of things. However you want to do it. Like Carol did this type of, you know, the side tuck style. Um, this is a, like a flip out. So that is a fun idea. I might do some things like that too, since I <laughs> messed up and didn't put enough tags. Um, there's a, like a side cut pocket and this pocket like this. So yeah, I think we'll do that sort of thing and see what we come up with. I don't want to cover a lot of these images entirely, but we can see what we can do here. So that could be a side tuck pocket and you'll still get to see that. And then we could even put in like one of these sort of bookmark type pieces I added. So let's put her there. So yeah, just, uh, you know, have fun with it. And if you make a boo-boo like I do frequently, <laughs> like it's not that big a deal that there's five. It just probably would be better with six, but we're going to go with it. And like I said, I'll do some flip outs or something like that so that it has a little more interest. It would have helped if I planned it further. I just finished that other one so fast I wasn't totally expecting to do this yet, but um, I'm glad. So if I'm going to do that, then it will get stitched. 
you know, along there because I'll go all the way around these tags. So this side won't get stitched, but these sides will. And you can if you want, um, like Carol did, she stitched around her or, you know, on the spots that wouldn't get stitched. I'm not going to worry about that right now just because then I'll have to pause again and, um, yeah, trying to do, you know, video. <laughs> so I'm just going to glue these on where I want them. And then when it's all dry, I'll stitch around each one of those tags and then these pieces will also get you know caught in that process and um, have stick better so yeah that's the plan i don't know if it's foolproof but we'll see where it gets us right Just add a few bits, kind of like I've been doing to the tags, just, just for something interesting. And I cut some of the, or I cut, I printed out some of those Artie Mays bits again. Maybe I want to use one of those. Um, small, so that I could use them easily in a little tag journal like this and I think I linked it in yesterday's video so if I forget today these are linked in yesterday's video if you want to go check them they're um ticket oddments oddments I can't say that word but anyway that's that's what these are so if you're looking for some fun little bits that one's going to be too big but we could put it somewhere else um, let's see what else we got. Ticket oddments. I don't know why that word's weird. <laughs> Just is. It's odd. Am I right? That's not gonna fit either. I think we'll we'll stick with this this one right here because it will fit. I just like to add these little decorations if you're like, why on earth? Then, you know, you don't have to do that. I just think it's fun to add some bits and pieces to them. Because I'm sure you often ask why on earth when you watch my videos. <laughs> mm. Just the way I am. also figured out if you scratch these a little bit if I can ever get it off of here um, some of the color comes off and this is just alcohol ink on regular old scotch tape so it's nothing difficult for some reason these ones really want to stick see they tear that and then you can't get the tape off and I'm not sure why it's like that there's a little bit of tape there really kind of aggravating honestly because the other ones are the same type of plastic and they peel right off don't know I have no answers on that let's turn it around this way it's a very sticky tape is all I can say so if you scratch them a little some of the color well on that one of course it's not really doing it <laughs> Some of the other ones, I guess it's just a difference in tape, probably, is what the issue is. Um, some of the other ones I have, you can scratch a little off. So, I'm going to use this. We'll say March. One, seven. Not that it has to be that, but that's what I'm going to use. like that and then a little stitch will go around that I think I am going to cut this like a tag I put these in there to use however like you could almost use them as tucks or whatever too so I did not notch the corners but obviously you can feel free to do that Oops. sorry if I just broke your eardrum and I also need to cut out some tag toppers. That's another thing that we can do. We can add something to that. Well, maybe I'll use 
is this? It's just these I'm cutting out. I'm going to cut this on my Tim Holtz cutter because I don't have anything that will cut those little itty bitty jaggedy lines like that. So. Even if I did, that would probably make me crazy. It's pretty tight. It's fine. <laughs> Sorry, if I'm off screen, I apologize. I'm just, all I'm doing is cutting this on this cutter. It's not... Little things are interesting to cut on here, but I love the edge. I love that deckled edge. I mean, you could get it with scissors too, I guess. But a lot of my deckle scissors do not cut well. Like they just make a mess, basically. So I like this because it, it does cut very well. I was worried about that when I bought it, but I really like it. It works. It does work. Yep, I went and got my first haircut today without getting my hair colored in a very, very long time. It was very weird. I was done so quickly. <laughs> um, it's, it's very odd. Going gray. And if you don't know the story, it's because I have become allergic to hair dye. Which, if you don't know, and you have this problem, um, it can be dangerous because it can progress and lead to more of a like anaphylactic reaction where you can't breathe. So that's why, if it was just an itchy head or whatever, I would just probably keep going. But I really don't want to have a problem where I can't breathe. So, yeah. Just an FYI, if you dye your hair at home and you uh, are experiencing the itchy, burny, scalpy thing, you might want to stop. Of course, that's up to you, but yeah, might be a good idea. I like to breathe, so... And I'll probably put something in there. I don't know what yet, but anyway. There's that. I don't know where all I want to put what because the visuals are good. You know what I'm saying? Oh, here comes the snotty nosed cat. <laughs> I went and got him. Um. He needed immunizations, so I they did a what do you call it? They gave him a steroid shot and antibiotics. So I don't know what's up with his nose. So I'm probably gonna have to take him back. I think he's allergic to his own self, basically. crushing and banging around. I think I might do that. That would be kind of a fun little side pocket. Oh, hold on just a second. Okay, I am back and I'm sure my camera's all changed and everything now. <laughs> That's what happens when you get a phone call, right? All right, so I think what we will do, I have cut the bottom off of a tag. That's this same tag. I don't know where I put the rest of it. But anyways, you can see it's, you know. So it's going to be kind of be a hidden pocket type 
pocket. So that's what we're going to do. And it won't mess up our view. So that will be lovely. And this doesn't want to work now. I'm sorry, you guys. Some days it doesn't pay to make video. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I was just not expecting that um, folio to get done so fast. And so I was working on this yesterday, but I've just had a lot of other things going on, it seems like, lately. And my planning's all messed up, and that messes up my brain. So, anywho, not, not your guys' problem, but <laughs> just sharing. <laughs> and then I have a couple tags. I, I did shrink down some tags when I printed the folio because I don't remember why. But anyways, this one I think is, no, this is a full size one. So I did shrink that one down. And then this was one of the, another piece kind of like this but I cut it down and then turned it into a tag, but that's in the kit. Okay, so we have those spots. And on the gentleman here, we're going to put this as a strip, just as a little tuck to put a little, almost like a little postcard in, just for fun. And then when it gets stitched around, it will be lovely. I just have to be real careful to use a straight stitch so I don't hog up too much of the little pocket. It's a little pocket. That's what I like about tag journals though. I love making tag type journals or these type of journals. I like making small bits because you can use almost anything to make a pocket or whatever. They're just kind of fun. I'm just going to sort of tuck that now for now. And then I think I kind of want a stamp on this. I think I'll go there. And that's one of the Artie Maze ones. I just cut it on the Tim Holtz cutter. I think I'm going to use this. It, it, um, it's kind of a weird stamp but because it says Barcelona Spain and I'm obviously not doing Spain right now but we're just gonna kind of steal part of it and not worry just so it looks like it has a mark stamp that off so I don't get it all over everything Okay, so there's that. That'll get tucked down more, but I wanted to make sure it was glued before I shoved that card down there. I don't think I'll do a whole lot. Maybe we'll put a um, stamp and a label or something on in case. love this bag. Look at that bag. These were gifted to me, so um, I don't have any good places. I mean, there's lots of stamp places on Etsy that you can find, so just gotta go find them. I can't remember the one I bought from before. But if you just go search stamps, I'm sure you will find. Ooh, this one's really beat up. Let's use that one. Um, I'm sure you'll find lots. <clears throat> that was a very kind gift. I'm grabbing old paper. Yeah, that was from my, my friend Lorraine. Thank you, Lorraine. her parents passed she didn't know what to do with all that kind of stuff because nobody in her family was really interested which you know that happens so I'll do that I'm gonna ink that
And you definitely could use glue stick. I'm just, this is out and right here and I'm using it. So I'll probably stitch around that and maybe try to get some more pages together. Um, you know, to sew in some signatures. I'm not gonna do as many as Carol did, but I'm gonna do some to fill this up a little more. And some flip outs. I'll have to think of some flip outs we can do together in this. that would be fun. That one's already got a cancellation, but I think I still just want to use a little side of this. So yeah, it doesn't really matter what a lot of those circle type cancellation stamps say. You can just, you know, stamp part of it and it doesn't matter. So now the big thing is letting that dry. So I think we'll stop there. I think you guys have an idea of what, where was I gonna put that one? Oh, I remember, I'm gonna put this, let me put this on real quick. I'm gonna flip this over so I don't get that black ink on stuff I don't want it on. This is one of the belly bands from the, or you could use it wherever. It's just a trim that's in the kit. Obviously you can use it as a bottom tuck. You know, how, however you want. I'm going to use it as a belly band on this page. And we're going to put this in there. So we just need glue on two sides. So yeah, you can put one of these together pretty fast. As long as you're um, <laughs> able to uh, do the whole fabric thing and not mess it up. I think that's why I started doing hinge journals. Is because I would try things kind of like this. I mean, I've never done one like just like this, but... Anyway, and would mess it up. So hinges are good because you can add them whenever. <laughs> but this is really pretty, and I love that one Carol sent. So I wanted to do one of these. And I think we might put a little something as a stopper down here. Just like, uh, I don't know, some kind of label or something. I just like to have something to sort of, I mean, it shouldn't fall out, but you don't know. So, yeah, that would probably work, huh? And then when it's out of there, you'll just see the butterfly. Let's do that. That's just a Tim Holtz butterfly. So it's a little thicker, not like copy paper. So that'll be a good thing. So we'll just tuck that kind of where we want it, or as far down as we want it anyway. I'm just gonna glue across the bottom part of the butterfly. You definitely don't have to do these. A lot of people, you know, don't. I just prefer to have it, make sure it sticks down, or you know, doesn't fall out where it's, when you're opening and closing your you can do it however you like it all right so then when that's out it looks good and then this is in it can tuck in there all right so that's where we're at for today i hope you guys liked this i hope you give one of these a try even you know don't have to have this kit just five or 10 or 12 tags. Um, you can do them all the same size, or like I said, you can do different sizes. It's just you're gonna have to change the size of your fabric hinges if they're all different. So I kind of like them all one size for this particular layout, but you can definitely switch it up if you want. All right, I hope you have a fantastic day and we'll chat again soon. Love you guys, bye.